Apollo, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be the next battleground. And Team Denmark, I don't think they're going to have to be that scared of a Cho'Gal here because this map really does not favor the big old ogre. Um, but there's other picks, like Zarya, you said, could always be good for a surprise coming in from Karsi. So, Hungry, that looked like a very prepared strategy. <laughs> they knew exactly how to draft it. They were mm -hmm. very quick with lock-ins, and it worked amazingly. So, again, Denmark have to ask themselves the questions of, do Hungry have something else prepared? Yeah. Like, do they have another stat uh, on Cursed Hollow, for example? I don't think Denmark are that worried, though. That was definitely a cheesy game. Considering the situations and the draft that they had, they actually hung in very well. They got to level 20, mm -hmm. uh, which, again, that, that was actually very favorable for Hungry. But they did still make it, and they were competitive even in team fights. So if I'm Denmark, I'm not too worried. I'm just saying, okay, guys, let's reset. We know we have more experience. Let's just be ready for whatever comes at us next. Exactly, and they definitely do have the player material here. Featuring players like Youngbeck as a coach, he should know how to uh, really boost a team in terms of morale, how to not let themselves get down too much. So let's see what he can pull off the hat here. Also, Nyman, shout out to him. I think he did a good job on that ETC. Managed to survive for a long period of time. Not going mosh pit, though. Is that something you could criticize, maybe? See, I think... You can criticize it because I think there was a quite a few occasions where this Cho'Gal between level 10 and 13 was playing aggressive when he had no business doing it. Yeah. But you have to realize as soon as you mosh and the Cho'Gal suddenly gets an Ana grenade and smelling salts, it's kind of all over. Mosh was not value. True. After there, 13 in the game. There was Sleep Grenade, there was Dahaka the yeah. threat coming in. There were a lot of potential issues with that. Yeah. So Dahaka again. Yeah, Diva the Hacker. Hungry gaining a little bit more support here, going back to 65% here after that last performance. Cannot yep. blame you, chat. Cannot blame you at all. I was going to say, hashtag Hugh Win is uh, leading by a large margin now. And if you want to help your Danish boys out there, if you're from Denmark or if you just have a soft spot for the Danish team in your hearts, then hashtag DK Win is the way to go. Make Twitch chat go crazy with those spam. So, we already see Genji. And a second attempt, round two. And very, we were getting close to a, a complete duplicate draft of last time after the break up being on the opposite side. Instead, though, right wing and gray main coming in here. So a bit more standard, double global potential, and one of the most uh, effective assassins in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the interesting thing for me is Denmark. Mm -hmm. This series for them, this can definitely be the match that decides who is the first seed from this group. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Denmark, they had to make a decision. They had to say, do we stick with Genji? Do we stick with what we tried last game and just hope they don't have some weird strategy again? And that looks like the decision that they've made. I personally would have liked to see them adapt to a much more standard, much more flexible draft setup and try and be more reactive to what Hungry can bring. Lucio getting out of the equation here. Lucio has seen pretty admirable resurgence, if you will. He hasn't been really touched that much in terms of balancing, in terms yeah. of changing his kit, but for some reason, the meta seemed to have shifted back in his favor. Yeah, double support matters are always favorable to Lucio, and the big change was when his health got up by 200 points, mm -hmm. that's the threshold of Lucio can no longer be one shot in CC when he's not out of position. Of course, if, he, if he's just random in the front line, he's still going to get one shot. <laughs> but if he's way back in the back line, they dive on him, he can usually survive that now, which has been the big change and has put him up into yep. definitely viable category. Still, obviously, is uh, a very solid counter against Malthael as well, which is baiting me a little. The Lucio ban here could be leaning towards the potential Malthael out of Denmark. I could see it. I could yeah. see it. The the thing for me is I'm I'm kind of scared of them picking it right now. I would much rather see that left for last pick because Hungary do not have a bad setup into mouth though right now. Emerald Wind always mm -hmm. value. Uh, Polymorph always value. Yeah. Tongue as well. Like run away with that. Uh, Greymane a lot of kill potential. So Arthur's picked. To me, that will now locks out the mouth though, and I want yeah, to see. They have no range other than Genji. I want to see a Karazim, or I want to see a range damage deal for Denmark now. Wait, why Karazim? Karazim is a fantastic dive hero, and I really want to see the Karazim Genji go in and really wreak havoc on the weak backline that is right wing. Looks like uh, Hungry smelt the cake here. They're going for a preemptive Tyrael, maybe. To be honest, though, Tyrael looks like a solid pick on Curse Hollow in general because yep. of 
The narrow choke points, holy ground 16 later, potential boss deals. Works of game Two has fun. Main, sorry. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, but Tyrio has fantastic synergy with double though. Mm -hmm. Because the way that Tyrio plays on this map is after level 10, he has fantastic tribute fighting. But after level 16, he has the best boss fighting and area fighting in the game. So yeah. what they want to do is they want to stall it out slightly, use the double global, use the mouth to stall the tributes, use the Tyrio to stall the tributes, and once they hit that later game, they have a much scarier team comp. They have so many boss steel tools now. They have everything Tyrio yep. owns and Emerald Wind potential. Unless ETC, and Twilight Dream. like it, and Twilight Dream, yeah, unless ETC can like potentially get some really good face melts, then any boss that gets raided. Denmark are probably losing. Denmark also have quite low damage. They've picked double low damage tank, yeah. and they only have a Genji. And what happened when Arthas decides to go a little bit more in the Bruiser round, well, we saw that in the mm, previous yeah, set. Yeah, we, we don't want to see <laughs> that again. <laughs> no, <we're laughs> so, so, yeah. They, pick. Soul Lane. I mean, Soul Lane is probably going to get taken by Arthas, uh, or at least it could be. Probably. ETC can do it. ETC could yeah. do it the case of an emergency, but I really agree with you guys. I think they need more DPS. They need more damage. More I, dots. I'd like to see the Kazi. More dots. <laughs> okay, well, that's damage. That's, that's, that's a fine pick. I like it. I like it. Double yeah. reset? Double reset. It's, uh, I, it's one of the few ways that you can really punish double verbal. So they, with the amount of disengage that they have in terms of the hacker move speed, Black Wing Emerald Winds, Arterial Swords, even Greymane with his dashes, the one of the only ways you can actually punish them and force them to be more conservative with their split soaking is by do running this double reset yeah. comp and just keep going. So I'm going to play for more than one kill. I'm going to play Nephilim's advocate here just a little bit. <laughs> right wing spell shield, Tyrael base spell armor, consistent shields over all. Double resets are good until you can't kill anyone. Do you think it's enough? I think they definitely have enough damage. So Arthas, um, and ETC are definitely scary lockdown. Yep. So as soon as they get a root or some form of CC on a target, uh, that one won't be there, most likely. Perfect. And my feeling does not have cleanse. So as soon as they get that lockdown, they have a lot of kill potential with that double reset. Yeah. All right. That's a good point. And we've seen this trend or the strategy of going double reset, going for the full blow up comp in multiple regions. Like it's not just a common phenomenon here in Europe, for example, we've seen Korean teams do it, Chinese teams attempt doing it. So this could really be something that maybe the coach, the former coach Youngbet brought into this with his great analysis. Gonna be interesting to see how much Denmark can make this work out. Curse Hollow is a tricky map. Turial is very strong. We elaborated on that during the draft. And ladies and gentlemen, we are getting Slowly but surely, we're getting ready to dive into that second game. And I couldn't be more excited with Denmark against Hungary, game number two. And we are jumping in, ladies and gentlemen, spawning on the left-hand side. It is going to be Team Denmark. And their opponents in the reds leading 1-0 to zero right now. We've got Team Hungary. The battle and that is a team yeah. that has officially won me over. With they such are. an exotic playstyle in game number one, making it look so Five. easy. Four, I think they, three, yeah, they've won a lot two, of fans tonight. They one. almost certainly have. And we have also, I like the fact that Denmark running a Fnatic spray and Hungary running a tricked esports spray. <laughs> Once again, showing uh, showing some respect, showing some love yeah. for the teams that they would maybe one day aspire to be as they move into position. A four-man bot lane with potential for right wing teleport. I mean, oh, Dahaka obviously something. is not going to stay here for very long. He's just yeah. going to take a little bit of essence and then teleport or brush shock all yeah. the way up. In case of a early game push using Genji's deflex, mm -hmm. just maybe try and grab a tower. And of course, Arthur's very high health pool. It's always a potential you exactly. can do. So, look how carefully Denmark is playing this. Lee yeah. Ming at the top lane does not have the guts to really move out. They're patiently waiting the until the Haka is seen, until they know where Genji, uh, excuse me, Greyman is. So, uh, pretty good stuff. Very patient, very, you know, calculated approach by Denmark. Very nice indeed. Tyrael has been in that bush almost all game. He will finally leave that bush to go re grab mm -hmm. his watchtower. So, Genji was able to spot him quite easily due to Genji sneaking away that watchtower in the first place. I think Genji really has to start kicking in in this early game. We couldn't really see a lot of value coming from him last game, but it's really hard to get anything done in the first place with uh, Hungry just playing so passively in the early mid game. But this time around, I feel like they really need to utilize him a little bit more, make him go for those ganks, get a couple of resets, slice his way in and out, and uh, snowball from there. 
One of the interesting talents here, we are seeing Mafurian with that scouting drone. True. We've True. seen most of the Mafurians uh, so far today going for Moonfire. This one just wants to make sure yeah. that uh, Hunger doesn't get ganked and immediately spots Genji as he spots appears Genji. in the bot lane. Well done by Mafurian. It's, it's indeed an exotic talent these days uh, since a lot of Mafurians like to go for the uh, improved Innervate. If you have mana consuming yep. heroes in your team, sometimes you just want to go wave clear, mm -hmm. especially in maps like Tomb. So uh, it's good to see some good old scouting drones back in this. Yep. Just th this the objective of Hungry, don't die. And that, yeah, <laughs> that exactly. is the entire scenario. Don't die until objective, in which case we can soak forever. And that is the plan. Whereas Denmark, they have almost no global soaking ability outside of ETC stage life potential. But like Bakery said, they always have the potential for that blow up. If they are able to get one kill, it doesn't matter how global your team is, if they arrive late or even on time, those resets could turn everything around. Exactly. Beautiful timing here on that first Siege Shine camp around the two minute mark. That's exactly when I want to start. And now the Haka needs to be careful. I think if the Hydra hadn't dodged uh, the, the magic missiles there, Genji could have maybe had enough damage to go in and Essentially, out. Essentially. Yeah. yeah as, as a reminder for people, by the way, this is not Hydra. This is the Hydra. Not, it's exactly. Yes. It's the Hydra, <laughs> not the Hydra from Team Russia. Different player completely <laughs> to avoid confusion at a later date. So. Right now, we're seeing Dizzy Dwarf holding it together at the moment in the bot lane. He has, he is losing both towers, though. First one already yep. dead, second one with no, with no ammo. It's almost certainly going to go down. But be careful, and as such, he does roll away. Objective already taken. Out just yep. grabs it and leaves. No one even contested. And I love how Hungry was basically neglecting that first tribute on purpose, saying that, you know what, the first out of three tributes is not worth fighting for. We're going to get some safe and stable value in the bottom lane. We're going to go for buildings. We're going to go for towers with those mercenaries at our side. And look at how Malfurion is that mobile hospital, providing yeah. mana and health to all nearby allies. And it's so good to keep uh, pushes sustained. And as such, I think Hungry is playing this early game very smartly. They will have to change their play style, obviously, as we're getting closer to the first point. Yeah, Mafirin is suffering from a couple of mana problems of his himself. Own, yeah. though, yes. So, <laughs> resource shortage shortages in this particular hospital. So, he is having to pull back at least a little play a bit further back. Even grabs a fountain, doesn't mm -hmm. even port back to base. Because he needs to be near Fana because he thinks they can get some more value here. What we see both teams ignore up to this point is the Bruiser camps. Uh, oh, normally, yeah. you have this interval of, you know, tribute, mercenaries, tribute, mercenaries. And uh, so far, Team Hungary and Team Denmark seem to be ignoring this completely, managing or prioritizing lane control over everything at this point. This time, Nuti on the Terial, making sure to establish themselves a good position. Dreamy is trying to dismount people, so the rotation takes a little bit longer onto yep. the tribute. That's a good idea. This time, both, like you said, both teams beginning to close in. But look at this, Nuti mm. already in position to try and poke this down. Nyman, gonna zone Tyrael out, but it's yep. Tyrael, so he's not gonna have too many issues with this. Greymane arrives, gonna drop his own damage, but Genji from behind. Only person to not arrive yet are Arthas and Brightwing. Brightwing with the global potential, of course. Arthas arrives just now, and it's gonna attempt to potentially make a play onto Duty or onto Greymane. Greymane, however, uses Arthas as a lovely escape route as Brightwing arrives. The objective has been abandoned as the teams brawl over it. Nuti taking the most damage, but tanking through it as Dreamy is the one who is forced back. I think Carsey on that Brightwing just had an absolute MVP move, using the Pixie Dust on the target that was heavily focused by Li Ming. So most of the ability damage was thwarted and negated. Keep in mind that Tyrael also oh. has a Oh, never mind. Malfurion in trouble. Radobo's in oh, the shield. The shield's coming in. Brightwing with the clutch objective is still not taken as Nyman dropping down Dreamy's gonna try and sneak it away as the chase comes in. To hug and running for it. Good oh. fatal, but the move to get it denies it. Malfurion with the denial as we still see the push coming in and the first kill goes over to Hungry and they will take this objective after what was about a two minute fight. <laughs> That was a pretty crazy fight, and that happens when you have good teams who fight each other on even terms. Beautiful to watch. I think, though, the problem here was Genji channeling the tribute a little bit I, too much and not getting the value. It was I basically liked the move. It okay. was a really cool idea of we're getting counter pushed. This fight is not going our way. Trying to sneak it and just leave. But he was a split second yeah. off. That Malfurion basically max rage moonfire was all that stopped him because ETC denied to Haka. Yeah. It was well executed. Hungry just executed even better. It was very unfortunate. Genji channeling that long basically meant he was not participating in the fight, so yeah. he was almost pseudo-dead, if you will. 
Um, only, yeah. yeah. So a little bit of an unlucky uh, disadvantage here now for Denmark uh, that they couldn't really threaten the curse point for the next tribute. And uh, uh, for Denmark, excuse me. And Hungary is doing a really good job now taking a lead in XP. Level 10 is around the corner. And I do have to say that I love the guts coming in from Hungary, not going for cleanse on either support. Oh. Right wing. He just hit level 10, and it's a quick pick Emerald Wind to escape, yeah. but that final hit was all it took. This does have a meaning, so on a 10 second cooldown yep. to not activate fully, so it will be available when he returns, which will be 10 seconds time, and the objective is just spawned. So as long as Hungary can delay, or if Denmark just don't contest, which looks like it might be a possibility here. Okay, yeah, they're coming contesting. In. They are contesting. Twilight Dream immediately used by Malfurion to try and keep himself alive. Sanctification's lovely forces Dreamy away. Brightwing has returned and may have to drop Emerald Wind. Already had dropped Emerald Wind, sorry. A Dizzy Dwarf still kills off Malfurion. He's alive for so long. Carsey focused as well. Genji doesn't, oh, doesn't get the reset. However, Arthas does. And that means Lee Ming is getting the resets in the back. Backline as Nuti is dropping low. Arthur's getting all the kills. But <laughs> Lee Ming with the poke potential does not finish off Hydra. Max to that burrow. This is Rover's a machine. He is such a machine. He's killing everything. <laughs> Thunder's just out of there. They are done with this. Three kills to two in favor of Denmark. And they pick up their, first, uh, their second tribute sorry, of the game. But they did lose bot four. four. They did lose the bottom fort, but that's literally the only thing you can complain about. Hungry played that team fight so well in the early stages of it. Like yep. they had a spot on sanctification. The bright wing action was super good. But in the end, it I would actually say it was a one man Arthur show. Him staying alive, dealing so yeah, much damage. He battered the back line. <laughs> yeah. Prioritizing the right targets at the right time, going from Malfurion before level 13. No ice block available. He knew very well, very well that he could take him out easily. And now it's boss time. Are we going to see a potential throw here in that pit? The boss hasn't been reset just yet. They continue to fight it. Little. No, I, I think it's going to be a boss split. Yeah, bottom one. Yeah, ETC, ETC runs away. He does have stage dive, but he also has self pub. Uh, yep. <laughs> Uh, I can't remember the term, not self-permanence, what's the term for like this one? Self-preservation. There we That's go. That's what he has. Self-sustain. Decides, de decides to not just dive in, <laughs> get himself killed in exchange for a potential boss. Yeah. Really solid, really good performance here by both teams, keeping the game closed, and that's exactly what we want it to be, ladies and gentlemen. But this tribute is in a very good spot for Team Hungry. It's close to their oh. base, close to the fort. It's in a very nice choke point, so if the enemies wanted to go past, they would have to take pretty much damage in that. Yes, they would, and as such, they pick it up, bring it to, to uh, two to two. So both teams are already looking for that cursed point. Difference is the forts are just leaning more and more in favor of Hungary. That bot one's already gone down yep. in exchange, so the bosses will both get at least a force value, and that's actually going to force ports out of both teams. Exactly, both teams mirroring each other, if you will. Um, and what did Mouth just heal? Did he heal a minion? <laughs> Maybe he did. <laughs> Gotta take care of the little guys. Yeah, I mean, as he's well, about you know? to be, so we might be a bro. Well get value. Always gain value. If you're gonna leave, might as well heal the minion. No, the thing is, I, I like the call by both teams to teleport back in time because it's the respect of Golem lane. It's the respect of yeah, boss lane, right? So if you take unnecessary damage on those outer defense lines here before the keep or in front of the keep, you're gonna make, you're gonna pay for that in the lane. Let's put it this way. Absolutely. So clearing those up as quick as possible. We actually saw that Denmark did lose their gate and took a single hit on the tower. Um, not sure what happened to Hungry's bottom lane, but uh, Brightwing was down there the entire time. Yeah, yeah Brightwing good. was able to protect that really well because she was there for so long uh, in advance already burning it down. All right, and both teams, you can really see how there's a single map objective <laughs> left. No mercenaries. Uh, there we go, the one bruiser camp and just uh, came back to life. But Denmark side. Exactly, that's a very good spot for Denmark. Team uh -oh, Hungry need time. to make sure that they are... No, are they going to let it fall? Okay. I don't I, think they can. Yeah, they can. They've got double global. They've got mercenaries pushing in the bottom. I think they can actually afford to ignore this. Just stall they it out a little bit. Want to, though. They will prefer at least a delay. There's the Elder in Smite. Delaying the Here's the stage time. They are very split. They need to brew back up to get Huge the sanctification. Diamonds. Good Emerald win to zone away. This lets Malfurion get into the sanctification and stay alive. And Central keeps Dizzy Dwarf alive, though. And guess what? He's in the backline again. Although Nyman being forced away. Nuti just wrecking through this. And him and Hydra pick up Nyman. Dizzy Dwarf realizes he's outnumbered and is forced to retreat. Oh, is Team Denmark going to be able to save themselves from the Dahakaturial Onslaught? Oh, by Rhaegar. We see her leaving, saving herself. Rhaegar had no such option. 
and he was taken down. But now with the curse active, the immediate five man yep. push from Hungry going straight for a keep. It's very unlikely they could core at this point, but this keep should be a foregone conclusion. Yeah, this is really going well for Team Hungry. They're looking good. And keep in mind that this is potential match point oh. here. If they win this one, they bring themselves into a very favorable position in Group B. All the lanes are struggling right now. Genji, as good of a, as a, of a hero he is, he's not the greatest of wave players out there. He is not. Right now, we are actually seeing Hungry. They are rotating around the map so quickly. A lot of this actually has to do with Tyrael's level 4 talent, right? Yeah, the Swift Retribution, it's so good. I wanted to talk to you about that, actually, because he deviates from the standard build we're used to seeing with yeah. Roderick and Forging, going for a little bit of a Q-Center build. He's going full Smite. Yeah, and the difference here between the, the, the Smite build and the Heratic Reforging. The Heratic Reforging means you're more likely to land that Holy Ground that basically is lo zones people out and steals objectives. Whereas the Smite build, Swift Retribution, means that you and your team, not just yourself, you and your team exactly. are hyper-mobile. It allows Malfurion a little bit more freedom, it allows Brightwing a little bit more freedom, and it especially allows the Harker a little bit more freedom. And he's a race car to begin he with exactly. already. Exactly. <laughs> he's super fast already, so it just seriously helps him. All right. Now, they basically use all of their trump cards, though, Team Hungry. That is, no longer are they close to getting another curse. No longer can they threaten to keep just like that. Instead, they're going to have to be the passive ones now, shutting down a tribute, a, a further tribute for Denmark. Because one curse and one unfortunate team fight can bring Denmark back into this game. Really, really could. And you can see Denmark hiding away here, not wanting to get caught out of position. They have no reason to be on the map right now. Mm -hmm. There's no objective yet. They can wait for the next objective. They're on even talents. No reason for them to get caught out of position right now. Exactly. And what's really good about the team composition from Team Hungry here is the global mobility. You can always threaten keeps now. You can always threaten lanes only to arrive in the nick of time at your ally's side, making this such a difficult team composition to deal with. In fact, if you take a look at it, they uh, basically took a couple of fanatic elements. They are the team that yeah. popularized this heavy global mobility style, and it's worked out so well for them in the past. It's working so well for Hungry right now. They are really putting on a show with Scope Mobility. Boss Reason spawns up in the top lane. Bot huge. 1 will be ready very soon. There it is. Now, are they going to yep. go for a trade? We're going to see Hungry go for theirs. How quickly can they do this? And will we see the reaction from Denmark? Oh, the reaction from Denmark is apparently just scout. Yeah. I, I, I think I'm fine with Hungry starting this, although Genji is nearby, although it's very obvious for the enemy team what they're up to. But Tyrion, yeah. Sanctification, Holy Ground, there's no way Denmark can steal this. Right wing. DPing in, gaining vision, uh -oh. gets caught. That room, that room emerald, 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 zoning out. Here comes the stage time. Boss is already taken, and oh. DPC is in a bad place. Beautiful timing on the isolation. Sanctification, it's a massacre, Kendrick. Ancestral will save Arthas, at least for the time being, but a relentless pursuit. Genji in the back line, though. Brightwing with the shield on herself, and Greybay keeping them alive. Genji is out of, running out of Dragon Blades. He's forced to retreat. <laughs> Dizzy Dwarf with the fruit, trying to save himself. Think of Dizzy Dwarf, <laughs> but he's really oh, get a boys. health. <laughs> Finally down. Genji trying for a last minute delay to stop the enemy going for his core. Don't chase him down, you fools. Yeah, it's pretty much what actually yeah. saved his team the, the game there. Exactly. All you need to do as Team Hungry right now is to focus on the base. If you can't take the core because you think it's too early, just go get all the keeps and keep those enemies nailed into their own base. Boss a half health. Li Ming, alive. Genji, alive. Reset potential available. Mm -hmm. And that forces Hungry Take back. Take second boss, even. Exactly. Yeah. That Genji just saved his team yeah. game. Or at least denade, denade, delayed the <laughs> inevitable. That is a very good point. If they hadn't chased down the Genji, they could have potentially grabbed another objective, like a keep or even the second boss. Go for the double boss play um, and keep them in their in, in their base. I think they can even start it right now. Like, we saw how they powerful the Tyrell is. They have Emerald Wind. Yep. They yep. have all the tools except for Sank. Sank is the one that I'm concerned about them missing. I do want to highlight Brightwing's map awareness here, by the way. She didn't have vision on the enemy team who was charging and leaping at her. She yeah. just had the game sense. She saw the limiting spells and immediately popped it because she knew that she would get jumped on very soon. Yeah, you knew Genji was on the side. She knew mm -hmm. she was going to exactly. be hit from multiple angles. There's no way Liming is in front of her tanks. Exactly. Just drop it. It worked exactly. really, really well. So cool to see. And now, of course, level 20 is around the corner here for Team Hungry. They can now decide whether they want yeah. to play greedily, going for another team fight in the boss pit. This tribute. Yeah, or they want to deny the curse, which, in my opinion, is the right play. Well, they're not even going to deny the curse. Hung oh, it's Hungry, sorry, will deny the curse. Yeah. Denmark, if they can get the curse, they can get you the curse. You shall not pass today, my friend. Shall not pass, Dizzy Dwarf. He's better delay. 
Round one. 20 is not available. This is probably the last chance Denmark have to fight on even talent tiers. Hydra misses the drag. Twilight Dream only on Arthurs. He survives. Stage dive into the back. Emerald Wind completely separate CTC. He power slides through. He gets that set, giving himself alive. Dragon Blade is active. Deflection giving him at least a little bit more sustain as he tries to drop down Mount Furion. But oh, the Genji gets it. Get him. The teleport is not land. Genji is alive. And looks like Denmark have cleaned up this time. Carsey has found Dreamy. This is cursed. This should not be a fight that Genji yeah. should win. Um, that health of good Brightwing. And as such, Brightwing full retreat. You and Denmark fall. with the turnaround. They're going for keeps. Tetra, this changes the entire game. Oh, load. they get this kill. No way. They can't lose oh, anyone else. That was okay. So close. That was huge. If Greyman had died there, there would, wouldn't have been any damage to us to really threaten and slow yeah. down the advance of Team Denmark. And look how cheeky they are. They, they know this is now and ever. Yeah, they've taken the most direct route yeah. possible to this keep because it's the only one seconds. lane where the fort is down. So it's the only one that will make the core vulnerable. Emerald 20 win. seconds to end the game. Greyman dodging all the CC. His damage is absolutely required to save this game. Oh. Driving Emerald win splits the team. Greyman doing any damage he can. Genji staying alive as the core. Can they do it? Drops. The health bars are dropping down. Dizzy Dwarf is Nyman. They got alive. one. The teams are alive. Dreamy takes no, it. Two, two, three. Nyman is silenced. They oh. take it down. <laughs> removed. 10% core. And Hungry move across the map to Hark is already there. And Hungry oh, no. are going to take the series in a 2-0. Somebody give their Greymane and their Brightwing a raise, ladies and gentlemen, because they defended that so well. Brightwing defended it until the very last moment, waiting patiently until there were no more interrupts for the Emerald Wind. Cleaning house oh, and Tetra. Man. This is it for Hungry. Five bad Emerald Wind. The rest of the team's on the way. They're a little slow because they have to run across the map. They don't have the convenience of Tahar. <laughs> but with 20 seconds left, all five members here, there is no chance for Denmark to revive this. And that's going to be GG and Hungry take game number two. In what a theory. spectacular, in absolutely spectacular fashion. Hungry wins another round, takes the first best of three here in the Nexus games in Group B. And they couldn't have done it in a just more mind-blowing fashion. I'm, I'm just super flabbergasted by the way they managed to defend that core. Beautiful done. Two against five. That was insane. <laughs> so, Brightwing, again, Carsey, he was my highlighted player, he's my key player, and he performed in this series. Yeah. First of all, in Chogao, you know, yep. not happening. <laughs> but second of all, on that Brightwing, the Emerald win on the court was the only Emerald win that could have saved the game. It hit like four people. It hit everyone, I think. I, it, it was, was insane. It was so good. I hope, yeah. Is that a replay? Please tell me. I, I hope that's a replay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, because I was busy running down here. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, you were like, Because <laughs> you thought the game ended like, we all thought the game ended a little bit earlier. I thought it was ending with that top boss, but as yep. it turned out, Denmark were very heads up. The Genji, especially, managed to bait the whole team to the really? good distraction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that saved the game. Yeah, really? it really did. And it goes to show that kills aren't everything, especially when there's other, more <laughs> precious, more valuable yeah. objective available. But, but Kendrick, Bakery, go, sorry, go ahead. My KDA, Kendrick, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how the new matchmaking system is going to work, guys. It's not about KDA. All right, Bakery, anyway, do us a favor and plays. show us those plays. Let's go, guys. So. Every fight in this game was absolutely insane. This is the first one. This fight goes on for like over a minute, I think. The, the tribute is here, and they, both teams want to cap it, and nobody can cap it. So we're just seeing completely back and forth, double support, keeping everyone sustained. The Li Ming and the Genzi are constantly looking, how do we get a reset? Like, what do we have to do? And we skip ahead, and we see finally the Denmark got really low, and eventually Hungary, with their double sustained support, did force them out and get the tribute. Now, th this fight gets even more insane. Instantly, ETC dies. The Sank gets a huge amount of value. The Emerald Wind again, shoving Arthur's out of position. Genzi is still here, though, and Mav's going down. Good Ancestral, and now it looks like the fight is in Denmark's favor, but it's not quite, because, again, a good Polymorph, instant punish onto the Grey Main. But wait, whose favor is it now? It's a two for two. Unfortunately, there is going to be Tyrael falling down, so Denmark got the favorable trade here. Hungry though, they come back in this team fight. Instant silence from Mav onto that stage then. Instant Ember win, completely splits the team, always kills the Arthurs, but they can't quite kill him. However, this does mean the ETC Nyman, he does end up out of position, he slides away, but it's into the hacker, it's not enough. 
and this is where the game goes from a very yeah. even slugfest into completely in Hungry's control. They get one keep, they get half HP on the other, and this potentially can be the game. They only use the Inward Wind here, they only use the Silence for a kill. It's looking like a fantastic situation, but somehow, if uh, from very heads up play from both the Leeming and the Genzi and the Arthurs down here, they keep everyone alive for so long that Hungry cannot end the game. And here I do want to highlight Karsi's map awareness. He didn't see the entire enemy team was ready to jump on. Like he just, he just got one or two. Absolutely, Started yeah. the Ming spells and immediately popped the emergency break. He, he knew that something yeah. weird was going yeah. on. So <laughs> he instantly something. pops that one wind and he knows that more damage is coming. Instantly pops the ice block and Genji saving the game like that. Mm -hmm. So um, sneaky. Absolutely love So uh, again, another insane tribute fight about to happen. So it, it all starts, it all kicks off. Who knows what's going on, honestly. Um, <laughs> And this fantastic stays dive right onto the back line, and they do not get the kill with that isolation. The Cessna goes off, and as soon as Sank and Ice Block are down from Afuin, this should be a fantastic fight for Denmark, and it is. Yep. Genji killing off Afuin in the back line. It's just a and the double reset. Mm. And then now it's Curse. They go for the core. Oh, the Emerald yeah. Wind oh, was no. absolutely insane. We didn't quite get it on the fade on the replay, but 10%, and everybody gets cleaned up. Everybody was cleaned up. Unfortunately for Denmark, they couldn't crown their momentum yep. that they had accumulated here with a victory. They still have a chance, though. They have a chance if they can potentially beat Germany. They still have a chance of making it out of this group, which, as we saw in the previous series, not as easy as we would expect it to be. And they still have to play against Belgium, which also put on a really good show against Germany. This group Especially is in game intense. one, yeah. So I was very impressed by both of these teams. It, yeah. it was a 2-0, but you know, in my mind, this is Denmark having a good showing, showing they can yeah. actually compete and definitely make it out of this group and possibly go far. Uh, but Hungary showing why I was so high based, yeah. you know, <laughs> like they, they really impressed me. Yeah. And unlike the previous series, Germany versus Belgium, this felt like a fair and square battle. This felt like two teams were fighting it out on even terms and it was it could have literally gone any other way, uh, either way's team. So uh, pretty solid. We're not done just yet, guys. You would be a fool if you decided to leave us right now because we have one more best of three coming up. In We're going back to Group A, basically, here, with the El Clasico, as I want to call it. France versus the United Kingdom, uh, a team that... Yeah. Go ahead, Tetcher. What, what would you describe them? Team UK? Yeah. Uh, I would describe them as much more organized than I expected them to be, so a little bit of uh, faith there. What's Favorite? Like? Come on, really? Favorite, maybe they're my favorite because I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I want to do here, basically. Yeah, in, in terms of skill, I think it's going to be a really good match. I think the major talking point here is that fans are definitely overrated by a lot of people. A lot of people place them really highly. Mm. I don't agree with that. I think they're probably a step below Poland and um, Spain as well. But the United Kingdom placed at the bottom of many people's tier lists, and they definitely have upwards growth potential with the amount of synergy and organization that we have seen in their practice. So this is going to be a much closer series than people were expecting. Still probably in fans' favor, but this is definite upset potential. All the more reason to stay tuned and to find out whether Tetra's hype is justified or not. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back after a short commercial break.